listeners, today is January 30th, 2019. I think on my intro, I had put the 27th because my calendar is right here and I just picked the first day in a row. <laughs> I have fun with things like that sometimes. So let's see. I see some of you are already in the chat room. So thank you for coming in early. I think I saw my brother's name. Hello, Ray. His birthday is tomorrow. So he's older than me. <laughs> I was trying to see. You know what? I think I forgot to bring in my cell phone. So let me go get it. I forgot to put it on the charge and it's only at 16%. Let's see if I can plug it into this computer. Everyone had a great week. So now I can sit back instead of leaning forward mm -hmm. and pressing into to get the chats. So I got my desktop right behind my iPad. So I'm looking at two things. <laughs> I'm going to go crazy. Okay. Let's see, got to pull everything up. I totally forgot about my phone today. Don't know what that was about. <laughs> so welcome everybody to the live chat. Just so you know, we do not have a topic tonight. So we are just going to be answering questions. I will tell you what my week looked like, tell you probably what my future week looks like. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, Bonita Nance. She says hilarious. <laughs> I think because I had the wrong date. <laughs> uh, I don't know if she's still here or not. She was here very early at 635. So we've got Vicki Lemire. She says hello from Cole, Michigan. Thinking of Cole. It is freezing cold here in the St. Louis area. We are at minus three. I think we... I can't remember what our highest temperature was this morning because I, I just went out. I had to go out today. I did one of those attempt to, block, to vlog things for you. Had everything all set up and then I had an outside party that was involved and <laughs> not ruined it all, but one thing has been delayed until tomorrow. So I'll put that video up. I need to get it edited, get it off of my phone. I was actually with my daughter today. So I got my brother here. I thought I saw his name. He say, that's a big New Year's resolution. He's looking at that list I put up there as my thumbnail. I'm cutting the fan on. If it sounds really bad, just let me know. I got a little desk fan here that can mess up volume. So let me know. Got Debbie Huey is here. Hi, Debbie. Just saw her at Scrap Club last weekend. We got Loretta here. She says, hi from Ohio. She says, my New Year's resolutions would be that, but more like that 25 years ago, laughing out loud. Exactly. Cute Red Socks is here. She says, hi, T and everyone. I was working on my sewing, my sew along shaded blocks today. They are so much fun. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, for the people that are working on that project, you're gonna be making a whole lot of them. 
and hopefully I'll get part two of the other project up um, the first, February 1st, which is Friday. I got a lot to do <laughs> in a short period of time. PB, PB Cruel says, howdy from Texas. Hello, welcome to live chat. Diane57 is here from Texas. She says, hey T, hi Diane. Tracy Davis is here. Hi Tracy, she says hello and she's waving at everyone. Angela Morgan says hello. Cheryl Lynn says, hey, quilt family with a heart. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Angela. Honor Sothar is here. She says, hello, everyone. Hi, Honor. Francine says, hello, everyone. And happy birthday to Ray. Yeah, give my brother some birthday shout outs. I'm not going to read them all, but he can read them. Carol Robinson is here. She says, hi, T. Love your show. We love your pattern on Princess Girl. Please send to me. Thanks my pattern on princess girl i don't know what that is i don't have a pattern called that so more clarification on that carol or as island robin is here she says hello everyone hi robin welcome francesca alfino is here she says hello everyone happy birthday ray and i just saw her saturday as rep quilting club um cheryl lamb says happy birthday ray june hansen says hi t and everyone hope you all are staying warm and safe. It's still nine below at present. It was 21 below actual temp this a.m. All righty. So it's some cold places in the USA, especially in the northern parts, <laughs> Midwest to northern. And I'm so glad it's gotten cold like that this year. So maybe to kill off some of the flies that we have a lot of in the summertime. Um, Melinda Carroll, she says hello to everyone. Hi, Melinda. And we've got June saying happy birthday, Ray. And I'm not going to read all of them, but Billy Withereed is here. She says hi, everyone. Claudette Bettis is here from Anaheim, California. She says hello, everyone. Just checking in. Hi, Claudette. Mary Smith says hello to you and everyone from Brooklyn. Hi, Mary. And then... Darlene Farmer is here. She says, greetings from Northern Virginia. How's the weather? It is 20 degrees here. Darlene, you asked me a question. Let me see if I can use my back machine to go to the comments because I answered one of your questions. Oh, I know what it is now. I did pull that. No, she did. You asked me a question and I don't have the answer to that. So that's why I haven't answered you on YouTube yet, but I'll talk about that. Um, my brother says hello to everybody. Francesca says she hopes everyone is staying warm. Great time to sew. I wish I could sew. I haven't sewed a thing. <laughs> um, Anna says that uh, we are minus three degrees here. All right. And Lisa, my niece, she says, hi, aunt. <laughs> hi, how are you? Thank you so much for coming back. <laughs> She does sew. She used to sew and make quilts a while back, but she hasn't done that in a while. So maybe she's going to get inspired by listening to the chat. Francine says, did you make it to road to California, uh, Claudette? Pamela Tabor says hello to everyone. Vicki Lemire says Wednesday and Thursday schools are closed. Woohoo for the, for the kids. <laughs> Kelly Rowland is here. Hi, Kelly. Pamela Tabor says, be right back. We've got Beth Dallas. She says, hi, T. First time to join you for a live chat. Discovered you a couple months ago and love your you and your videos. I'm from Southern Illinois. Well, thank you so much, Beth. I see I'm frozen. <laughs> see how long this takes to come out of here.
Hi, I'm glad it came back. Messing with some buttons and turning my screen different ways. Of course, I don't know when I went, uh, when I froze. So I'll just go back to Beth Dallas. She says, hi, T, my first time to join you for a live chat. Discovered you a couple months ago. Love you and your videos. I'm from Southern Illinois. So welcome, Beth Dallas. First of all, to chat. Also, thank you for supporting the T Quilts channel. I appreciate that and hope you enjoy it. I will be uploading some more tutorial type videos. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my channel for the most part. So I'm just doing whatever it is that I'm doing on a daily basis. I'm just sharing that with you all as I go along through that process. Uh, we got Mary Cohen here. She says, greetings from Kansas. Hi, Mary. Diane with her sense of humor. Sandra Jacobs is here. She says, good evening from the deep freeze, also known as Wisconsin. Yes, honey, I saw them snow, uh, shoveling snow there. Minus 18 wind chill, and it's at, she says it's minus 18, and then the wind chill is at minus 36. Leetta Bryan is here. She says, hi, T and everyone from Cole, Missouri. Yes, indeed. And Claudette said that she did go to road to California on Saturday. Bonita Nan says, hi, Miss T and everyone. She's back. Diane Rick says, hi, T. I'm freezing with you. It's four degrees here in Kansas City. Glad I caught you live again. Hi, Diane. Thank you again for coming. And Wind Sprinter is here saying hello, hi, welcome to chat. Charmaine says it's nine degrees in Belleville, Illinois. So at least it got out of the uh, minus. That's not too far from me. Uh, Ethel Warren says hi from Chicago is minus 12 degrees here. Yes, my niece just moved to uh, Chicago. So she is experiencing this very, very cold weather <laughs> that Chicago has right now. Rhonda says, Rhonda Barlow says, evening everyone, happy birthday, Ray. Another year is always a blessing. Yes, indeed. Helen Thomas is here. She says, hello, T and family. This is Helen from San Antonio. Temp is 51 degrees. Woohoo! <laughs> That's a, a scorcher right there. You need to wear shorts. <laughs> I walked outside when we get like a 10 degree difference. It seems like, oh, it's not so cold out here. <laughs> it's so cold that any uh, warm up feels good. But you know, just like typical Midwest weather, tomorrow we're gonna be in the mid thirties for a high. And then by Sunday, I think we'll be in at 60 for a high. So just stick around long enough, it'll change. Janet Mackerel says hello to everyone. Andrea Davis says, hello everyone from West Palm Beach, Florida. It's 58 degrees, not to make anyone jealous. Of course not. <laughs> Joan Elkin says, hi T, glad you are back. Hi everyone. Hi, thank you Joan for the welcome back. She says, love your fabric haul. Thank you so much. I try to find if I'm gonna buy something, since I don't like need anything, I try to make sure that I get like a good bargain or I can do something with it as far as maybe like making a charity quilt out of it or something like that. But at least um, I got a good price for it is what I try to do. Um, let me go back my screen just jumped up a little bit. C. Murph says, hello everyone, glad to join in on the chat. Welcome, have fun. If you got any questions as well about quilt related topics, go ahead and pop those into the chat box. Any of my moderators, if you get any comments that are inappropriate, um, don't put them in time, I'll just ban them from my channel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Helen Thomas says, happy, bir happy birthday to your brother, Ray. Thank you so much. Darlene says, I attended a quilt guild on Monday. 
After many years of not participating, many years, I decided to join. This is my first in joining a guild. Well, congratulations. I think a guild is what you make of it when you join. And sometimes the people may appear to be rude and you just have to get to know people. And I, I do recommend if you join a large quilt guild that you do go to breakout sessions. So if they have workshops, or other off-site meetings like that. some people will meet at the library where they just meet and do handwork i highly recommend that you do that because it will make your guild experience a lot more pleasant uh, sonia jones is here she says hello t and everyone hi sonia welcome to chat june hansen says we would gladly take it we didn't even have mail service today and we the only mail service that we had was they dropped off packages at the door but they didn't do any like mail to mail where they were going door to door they just drove to whoever had a package and dropped those off and i i agree with that wholeheartedly i wouldn't want to be out there all day i have a niece that also works for postal service but she works in the rules setting so she had to work all day because she drives and she puts the mail in the mailbox at the curb. Well, she still got a, she's in a neighborhood, but the houses are farther apart. But she still has to have her window down the entire time. So it was just cold. It was just too cold for that. We got Eric Oda here. He said, hello, 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 hey. And he's telling Ray happy birthday as well. Joan Elkin says, I love those squares from Quilt in a Day. Yes, those are pretty cool, and they were all tone on tone, so they would go with just about anything that you were working on, which made it really nice. Eric, you just came in here and already need to be banned, okay. <laughs> um, Diane says, that's Texas weather. If you don't like it, just wait a minute and it changes with the wind. Yes. Helen says, no tea. I wore gloves, jacket, and a cap. It's cold to me here. Not sure how I would make it up north. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's I would wear probably a, a jacket with that i wouldn't need a coat but i don't even wear long coats anymore i wear coats that come to my knees i don't wear them where they come to the go to the calves now if i was living in chicago or wisconsin then yes i would most definitely have a long coat <laughs> and then eric says you would not believe who i met this weekend Ugh. It must be a famous quilter because he must have went to road to California. Did you meet? Uh, no, he know Jenny. He know the people from Missouri Star. Did you see um, Leah Day? That's who I'm gonna guess, Eric. Leah Day. Kathy Mitchell says, "Hi, T. Love your show. What kind of quilting machine do you use, and was it hard to learn?" Um, if you're talking about long arm quilting machine, it's back right here. This right here, that's a Gamel. I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. It's the Vision 2.0. It does not have a computerized system on it. Was it hard to learn? Uh, just like learning to quilt, it's the same thing. When you start learning how to sew a quarter inch seam, it may seem daunting at first. And it's just something that you tackle and handle as you go along. Um, it was easy for me to learn. I just needed to know the process, the steps of how you load is completely different than when you're quilting on your home sewing machine. So yeah, I love it. So it was easy learning curve for me because I really wanted to learn. Francine says, I'm planning to do a quilt as a wedding, a wedding guest. So I think she says, I can't afford a long warmer. Can anyone suggest simple quilting I can do on my machine? And I guess that would also depend on the pattern, but meandering is always sufficient, especially for people that don't quilt. They don't know the difference, so just meander. Or do straight line quilting with your feed dogs up using your walking foot. That would be acceptable too. 
And Cute Red Socks want to know if Eric met Rob. <laughs> Eric says he met Eleanor Burns. Okay. <laughs> uh, Angela63 says, hi, T. Hi, Angela. Welcome to the chat. And he said he did go to Road to California, too. Lauren King is here. She says, hi, hi, Lauren. How are you? So, what did I do in the past week? Absolutely, oh, <laughs> I did do a lot of quilting. I did a lot of quilting on this quilt, although it's still on my frame. <laughs> what about, I want to say like 24 to 30 inches, and then I also got to do the side and bottom border. Well, the border is, the bottom border is included in that 30 inches. Um, it's just taken a while. I did not realize I thought when I put this quilt on my frame that I was just going to do an all over panto and then realized that I had yo-yos, buttons and stuff in certain blocks and I didn't, and some of the yo-yos were the actual design of the block so I didn't want to take them all apart. I think it would have been easier to just redo a block but that's where I'm at. I, I am getting close. I have not sold on it since like last thursday though so it's just been sitting since last thursday but i was trying to well maybe it was friday because i thought i was trying to get it off my machine on friday so i could take it to scrap club on saturday and i did not make it thinking of scrap club i did go to scrap club this weekend it was our first meeting for the year we had um well we got three new members two of them showed up one couldn't make it to this particular meeting but we had a great time. It was a uh, 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 meeting of the year where I kind of go over what we're going to do for the year. And while I was there, I just thought I would share with you all. I was really nice. Somebody came in with one of those rolly carts, yay high, with about four or five drawers full of scraps from our member, Kathy. We had a member that passed last year. And so she brought in her like scrap bin cart and so she allowed everybody to go in and in one of the drawers i purposely stayed away from the cart and then i go over there about maybe two or three hours later and this is what i find all of this and this is exactly what i need to finish off my alphabet quilt that I quit working on because I was running out of a lot of light two inch squares and I was cutting some and still running out and then I also added in some half square triangles that was laid out on the table so I got plenty of two and a half inch squares to add into that scrap project so that was fun <laughs> didn't do any sewing at scrap club mostly did organizing of stuff but that was fine. I got it done. And then on Sunday, I decided that I needed to go back to card making class because I have not been making cards at all. And I just wanted to show that when I go to card making class, that I always have a little container that's packed. I make sure I have like a bone folder. I have one of the small scoreboards and then the score because i i don't want to lose it so i put it inside and this is probably the martha stewart one yes it is martha stewart and i made some cards so it's going to be glaring because they're in plastic sleeves but i thought i would show you what we made in card making class on saturday the instructor's name is shannon silverman out of st charles missouri she teaches classes she also has a card box and the name of her card box is paper crate and this one i didn't line up very well but since i didn't have the stamp set i didn't really worry about that one and the last one is a happy birthday one that was fun because I have not been to a card class or we. I used to go to their card retreats. They have two retreats a year. And then I had been quilting at those retreats instead of doing card making because it just seems like card making was harder for me to pack up for. Quilting was a whole lot easier to pack for. And I know that sounds very crazy, but to me it was. 
So that's what I would normally do. So it was good for me to get back in and I've already scheduled myself to go back in February for the next class. We actually have, most months we have two card classes a month and she'll have one on Saturday, one on Sunday. And I can never make the Saturday classes because of my schedule. Um, Francine says, is there a possibility that you can show what you've done so far on the quilt? <laughs> yes and no. Because I've got like these umbrella lights over here but i will try don't look in my room because i'm still working on it it's not like super bad but with me having to pull out lights i got some stuff down on my long arm frame that i'm saving for a haul i also got like my scrap club paperwork because i'm working on that as well so don't talk about my room <laughs> that's supposed to be clean i told you in that video that i was on like time i had time number three by the time I uploaded that video. But I need to see first, I don't know how to reverse this camera. That's the problem. So I'm not gonna know what you're seeing, okay? <laughs> because I think I've tried to reverse this pad, iPad while I was recording and it just doesn't work. The funny thing is, is you're not gonna see much. Let me move this. You're not going to see much because what I've already quilted has been rolled up on the leaders. But this is what I am actually quilting. So I've been kind of doing like a, a excess through the checkerboards here, the black and white checkerboards. If I go up a little closer, maybe you can see the quilting on this shoe. I'm trying to lean over and see what you're seeing, but it's difficult. Here's another block you can kind of see maybe. I'm hoping you can see some of this. <laughs> and then here's another quilt block. See, it's a sampler quilt. Hold on. See if I can show you this one just a little bit more. But I can't really show you a lot of it because it's been rolled already. So this is what I'm actually working on. Hoping you can see some of this. I have no idea. And that stack over there is a stack of boxes or things that I've gotten in the mail. Mostly for the new heat press. If you all don't know, I told you I was getting a heat press. So I got the heat press and then I had to get some supplies for that heat press. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I saw something go crazy. <laughs> so hopefully you saw something. I don't know exactly what you saw. <laughs> That's the best I can do. So now I got to prop the iPad back up. Just a second. Um, let me go find that question so I can go to the next one. Hold on. Okay. And then also just for information, because just in case you're asking, I'm using a medium gray thread. I did not want to change thread colors throughout this entire quilt. And instead of using light gray, I decided to use medium gray because I have all color spectrums in this quilt. And I didn't want the light to get onto a fabric and become so, so seen like on a red or something, so I decided to go with the medium gray. Um, Angela says, next time you are in the ATL area, try to visit Inktown Quilt Shop. It's one of my favorite shops. Okay, normally when I go to Atlanta or when I travel, I try to drive or rent a car just because I then have more freedom that I can go places, but since I did not have a car, I really couldn't get out and do exactly what I wanted to do. I was kind of under um, someone else's schedule. And so we were only able to go out on 
Monday. We thought we could go Sunday, but one of the shops that we were trying to go to was some kind of fabric surplus store. And they were not open on Sunday or Monday. So we decided to go to a different quilt shop as I was going out to the airport because everything where my friend lives, she must be on the other side of town because every time I put something in to go somewhere, it's like 40, 50 miles to go to something. So I didn't have my own schedule. And then I was there for a purpose as well. You know, before, when I got there on Thursday, all of my time was spent helping her prep. Her son became an Eagle Scout, which is a a very high accomplishment so i heard i didn't know anything about it because my brothers didn't do that and i of course do not have any sons now my daughter went to through girl scouts but she didn't go all the way through she went she made it to cadet and then she stopped so let's see but thank you for the referral also i appreciate that <laughs> and Diane says, nothing like a challenge to bring out the procrastinator in me. Exactly. I am so sick of this quilt. I don't know what to do. And like when I sew on it, my machine times how, how long it's been making stitches. But I don't think it's in time with how long I say I've been making stitches. Because it told me when I quit that I had like four hours of machine sewing time. And I've been on this quilt for like six or seven days. <laughs> At least all day, you know. By the time you're doing rolling, you're thinking about what you're going to do. You're using rulers and, um, you know, it's a lot. So I, I don't, I will not become a custom uh, quilter for anyone. It just takes too much and you definitely will never get paid for custom work. It's a lot of work. Uh, Eric says, T, do you pin your quilts to the leaders? No, I actually use leader grips. And I think I told you all that I bought leader grips, but I've never shown you me installing them. It's one of those things that I kind of like, I need to have somebody come and record me because none of my family are interested. And I need, because it's so awkward because if I got the, I can't put the tripod in a way because I'm moving around on both sides of the frame and, or trying to move the, tripod to both sides so it's one of those awkward things that are hard to record as a solo person but that's what i use i love leader grips i do not like those red snapper things because my friend has those and they would come apart inside of the the casing and then we were trying to twist them back together they were twisted together so i didn't like those and C. Murph said, I made the pickle star blocks this week. Just wondering, did you guys add sashing around each block? Pickle star. I might have had that in that quilt as a sampler block or something similar to that. And it's just, it's a sampler quilt. So no, to your, in answer to your question, if that's what you're asking about. Eric says, I just did a bunch of Christmas cards to use up stuff and get ready for next year. Well, that's pretty cool and awesome. I need to start early because I did not send but about maybe six or seven Christmas cards out this year. Just bad. And Diane says, color and press me tea. Those are very nice. Thank you so much. Francesca says, Eric T uses leader grips. <laughs> <laughs> she already know we talked about it in her video. Angela says, love your cards. Very pretty. Thank you so much. And then Lisa says, how about Valentine cards? We do themed Valentine cards. We do themed cards. So according to the time of the year, like sometimes she'll just do birthday sympathy or thank you cards. And then when it gets to like Valentine's Day or something, we'll do Valentine's Day. And then thinking of that, I also subscribe to Paper Pumpkin Box, which I haven't even opened yet. Yes, I did. I opened it, but didn't open it. And it says, be my Valentine. And this came out in January. So they always send out cards. It's like a kit. So let me just show you the outside package. And it'll have all the things that are in here. And what it is, is little treat boxes for you to put your Valentine treats in. Hoping you can see that. 
with the without the glare so yeah but they always have something cute in these as well these come once a month and have everything you need except adhesive in the package and i still don't get those done so i'm just a mess right now um and it's rolled again let me go back <laughs> Okay. I think I'm back. I saw that we froze as I was scrolling back. I didn't notice that we had frozen again. Okay. So that was from my niece. And then Eric is asking, is leader grips only for the size? Now you can use leader grips to put your quilt on your uh, system and you can buy this is how I use leader grips. You can buy leader grips where it, it will go on your take up bar, which is this bar, and then your, which is for your backing and your top. So this is your backing. It goes on the take up bar and then your backing also goes on the backing bar, which is down under the machine. And then you have your top, the bottom of your top or the, the edge of your top goes on another roller. I opt to float my tops sometimes, and it just depends. The reason why I'm floating this quilt top is because this is my first time using two bats. And I told, remember last year when I went to the quilt shows, I bought all these different types of battings and I wanted to try them. So on my bottom layer, I am using warm and natural. And then on my top, I'm using like Tuscany wool on top. I want a thicker quilt. I actually want to use this quilt on my bed. And so I wanted something that was a little warmer and i'm finding that the warm and natural bat is not as thick and warm as it used to be it's a little bit thinner so i'm experimenting and so when you're using two bats you will never put that top on the bottom or i think you're going to have problems because your batting will have a chance of getting caught and so this way i can go up under and get my bats and make sure my bats are laying flat um, let's see what else. And Diane says she tattooed her sewing machine today. That's going to be one of my projects that I'm going to do on the heat press. Eventually I got to figure out what it is I want to put on it. I'm, I'm just probably going to put a name on it. I'm not going to like cover the whole thing. Like some people are doing, I'm just going to put a name. So it will have a tattoo. Rita Williams says, hey, T and everybody, I made it live in Illinois and was trying to keep warm. Didn't have my tablet with me. Uh-oh. Let's see. What time is it? It's 735, so we're okay with time so far. Welcome, Rita. Um, Helen Thomas says, I saw your fabric haul. Can a whole quilt be made from a bundle? It depends on how big that bundle is. Bundles are different sizes. And then what size quilt you want. Quilts are different sizes. So in essence to your question, question yes. If you have 12 fat quarters, you can make a quilt out from a bundle. Uh, if you're talking about making a quilt from like five inch charm squares, then you're not going to have as big of a quilt. But you should be most definitely be able to make quilts like the yellow brick row quilt or just cutting big size squares and cutting them out whatever like eight inch finished squares would be okay i think that's what i'm going to do with this flannel back here that i purchased by mistake i still got it sitting out and the reason why it's sitting out is because i am going to wash this and then i'm going to probably cut this into eight and a half inch squares or combinations of eight and I'm just going to sew this back together because I want to use this since I accidentally bought it. I don't want to store it and then it just gets buried. But it needs to be washed and dried before I use that because flannel most definitely shrinks a whole lot more than regular uh, quilting cotton. Gloria says, that is beautiful. Thank you. I'm assuming that she, that these comments are about the quilt. Francine says, I tried the long arm at road. That, that is beautiful. Thank you. And that's how I suggest people purchase a long arm quilting machine is to go to a national quilt show and use every long arm machine there. 
sew on it for just two minutes. You will know right away if it feels comfortable for you. If it's vibrating and shaking, you know, you if, if it's vibrating and shaking there, there's a possibility that it's gonna vibrate and shake at your home. Because I feel like if a dealer is trying to sell you a sewing machine and it's vibrating on the show floor, that's what it's gonna do at home. Because if I, had, if I was selling something, I'm gonna to try to present it in its best fashion. I'm not gonna show you something that I feel like you might not wanna see. Uh, a lot of people are saying awesome job good job on the quilt top eric says he saw some paper piecing yes you did it's a whole lot of everything in there <laughs> um i hope francesca is back he says you got the heat press what did the hubby say not a thing <laughs> absolutely not a thing he he did he only his only concern is where you gotta put it and so I have a plan but right now it's sitting on my kitchen table <laughs> but I do have a long term solution for it it will be in the in my laundry area so because I'm not it's not something that I'm gonna be using probably every day and if I did it would be better in a basement because the basement is cooler as well so. It will be moved, but right now I'm having fun with it, so it's upstairs. June is saying it looks good. Diane says, can't wait for the video with your heat press. Now, the first one is going to be kind of raw because I'm just trying to figure this thing out. But I have already made something else that I've given away, so it was pretty cool. So I'm getting better. It's a learning process. And Janice says, thank you for showing. You're most welcome. My pleasure. Loretta says, yes, it looks really good, T. And then Francine says, I can't see enough. And what you did looks good. And that's my only thing was that I rolled. I tend to roll my quilts when I quit. And then when I come back, I've got like a clear slate that I can start back work on. And so that's what kind of happened here and why you can't see a whole lot of the quilting because I had just rolled it. But once I get it off the frame, once we have some decent weather in the area, I will take it outside on my deck and I'll do some close ups. And I've been taking like some photos of it. And when I first started quilting, I was like showing you how, what I was doing in each spot. Well, that got old real quick because I'm like, I'm gonna be quilting this thing forever. So, so I stopped doing that. But thank you all for your compliments on the quilting. And Debbie saying that she just got off the phone. Now I can listen to what's going on. <laughs> no, Francine says, sorry to make you go through the trouble with the tripod. It's not the tripod. I'm actually on my iPad. But for some reason, I don't see a button where I can reverse the screen. So that was the other problem. I can't see what you're seeing. It's facing me when I start and then I don't see where I can change that. Now, if somebody has an iPad Pro, let me know how I can do that if you know, because I don't know everything about technology. Kathy Mitchell says, do you hand applique? Yes, I do. That is actually my preferred method of applique. And if I'm doing anything where I want it to last forever, I will most definitely do hand applique. Orangeine is also seconding the uh, gray thread. It's the best to use. Shirley Rayleigh just joined you. She says, love the quilt. What type of batting are you using? It has a nice loft. And I think I've already answered that probably before I got to your question. On the bottom layer, I have warm and natural. And on the top layer, I have Tuscany wool. I'm using two bats. Linda DeVito says, welcome from Rockaway, New Jersey. Welcome. I'm sure you're freezing cold too. Shivia Henderson says, good evening, everyone. Uh, Darlene says, do you plan out your quilting prior to actually quilting? Um, if it's an all over panto, I guess I could say yes, because I picked the panto or if I'm going to do like um, swirls or loops or meandering or just wavy lines, then yes. But when you get to a sampler quilt, 
I, I, I just learned something from one of the quilters in my Saturday class. She gave me a tip because I had tagged her in a Facebook post about how I would never be somebody's custom quilter. Um, I just start quilting and then I just look at the block and then I try to figure out what to put in it. Um, she says what most long armors will do so that it's kind of a semi custom is they will like if you have my checkerboards like I'm putting X's and all of that she said it would, you would whatever you have of the same type you put the same quilting in so if you have a sampler block then they would put the same quilting design in each block and then they would do something different in the sashings just something different in the cornerstone something different in the border so that was a good tip as well it's just way too late for this quilt and plus this quilt is an applique quilt where i've got 3d effects where i couldn't do an all over design of any kind so it needed some custom quilting in some spots anyway but it was a good tip and i will be using that on some future quilts that i have that don't have any 3d elements and that was a good question darlene um and then thinking of questions let me just make sure I answer some other questions. Some stuff I got to do is taxes. <laughs> I got to at least do me, my brothers, and my mother's taxes. And then I had a question somebody asked from that hall, what would you do with the charms? They said they're cute and all, but what would you do with them? Now, this is not charm related, but this is something similar. This is, but actually belongs to one of my guild members. And she was going to pitch it because she was downsizing and I took it from her just to hold on to it for her. But it's just like you could use pins, charms, buttons, anything, and you can make something like this that holds all of your collectibles. So they're all in one space. And this was done so many years ago. And I got it because I'm thinking maybe I should make one of these for myself and put my, I got all kind of buttons and pins um rotary cutting things when uh, opa would give out things Benner text used to give out pins so i got a lot of pins and this is something that you can do with those and then you can just use it as room decoration so that's something that you can do with that didn't want to forget that question and then darlene also asked a question in on youtube let me go find that Oh, she was saying, can you recommend an electric rotary cutter? Trying to find tools easier on my arthritis. Also, what do you think about EQ Mini software? Thanks. And I don't, there are electric cutters or scissors that they use for cutting like at the fabric stores I've seen. I personally have not seen an electric rotary cutter. That doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It just means that I haven't seen it. But that's one of the reasons why I would recommend going to die cutting systems, especially an electric go or a studio cutting because the studio, even though you have a handle that you turn, it's not as hard to turn as the go turning handle. So either get a go electric or a, a, a go, no, the AccuQuilt Studio too. And they cut like butter. It's the difference in die cutting systems are are dramatic so you you get what you pay for but that's what i would almost recommend and then just stick to things that you can your quilts will then be featuring things that you can die cut which is a lot of things because you can cut if you buy a two and a half inch strip die you can also cut 45 degree diamonds uh 30 degree diamond 60 degree diamond so you're not limited you can cut your squares from that same strip die so you can get a lot out of some of the dies and then i also work my dies and make them do other things as well so that's what i would recommend um i saw this screen just rolling 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 <laughs> um I don't know where I was. Uh, Bonita says, I think Shakita is here. I don't think I said this. So Shakita Pearson, hi, welcome to the chat. Thank you so much for joining us. And then Bonita says, I feel honored to have received a Christmas card. <laughs> um, I think the people, 
if I'm not mistaken, I thought I put a Christmas card in everybody that won a gift. And so those were the Christmas cards and then a few for family. I'm not sure, so don't hold me to that, but that's what I think I did. That's what I tried to do. Diane Rick says, thanks for the info because I was going to order some red snappers. None of my friends use them. They pin. I just, I don't know if they have changed red snappers, but I will say that I love my leader grips and I have been using them for about a year and a half and I haven't had to do any maintenance. The only maintenance I had to do was I had to order a new snap-on pieces and that's only because I lost one. I couldn't find it. They're clear and I have a gray carpet. And so when I dropped it in between my long arm system and I've got my storage units there as well, I couldn't find it. So I went and bought me a new set of um, uh, things to clip it onto the quilt top, uh, the little snappers. Um, let's see. T, what specification requirements do you consider be before purchasing your long arm? Great question. That was from Wind Sprinter. I have a whole video on that. Things to consider when purchasing a long arm. So please search for that. Put in T quilts, things to consider. I was the first person that ever came out with anything compiled about buying long arm machines. And now I see articles being put into magazines. People are making videos on it. And it's also being talked about now in some of your Facebook groups. But I did that. And I'm not saying that it covers everything, but it covered what I wrote down, some things that I found out as I went along the process. Because there was absolutely nothing when I wanted to buy my long arm machine. Um, Diane says, I'm finding out how hard it is to record and work at the same time exactly <laughs> uh, and you and sometimes I would do like two and three blocks instead of one block just so that I can make that recording process go a lot quicker and so that's something else too then I've got extra blocks again you know or I go ahead and just if it's a gill optional block I'll just go ahead and put all of those into the drawing I still haven't won yet <laughs> Eric says, I'm tired of pinning my quilts to the leaders. I need something else. This is so much faster than pins, and you don't get snagged on them. And June says, my grips are way too hard to push in, so I pin. I think if you use it a couple of times, and maybe the first time you use it, um, maybe try pinning like a strip of batting to like stretch them out a little bit, something thin like the warm and natural or even a thin polyester bat to just give it a little bit more space. And then it will go easier the next time. And I actually press into the leader. You're not pressing with your hands like this. So if my knee is the leader, I'm pressing into the, I mean the roller, I'm pressing into the roller, not holding it in my hand. There is a difference. And so it goes a lot easier. Eric says, I had my batting get caught in the middle of a quilt. I just say I was trying to trapanto. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> I just lost my list. Look at this. See, you all think I'd be making this stuff up. My whole chat box just disappeared. <laughs> it just came back. <laughs> Joan says, that was great idea first quilt I made was a jelly roll and it was so thin depressing to do all the work and have it that thin and then she says she loves wool J Sam says I got my Gamma optimum 30 inch today woohoo woohoo <laughs> that's a big one and I'm assuming that you have computerized system with that as a 30 inch and that's the reason why I'm glad that I got the 24 if I am going to do hand quilting this is not in my video because I was wanting to get a larger frame initially, but I didn't have room for that. But I think if you are not getting a computerized system, if you're getting larger than a 24 inch, your reach is so hard for you to reach across that whole space. So you're not going to be using all that space anyway. Now, if you're computerized quilting, then that's a different story. So... 
And uh, Jay Sams is on a roll because I already finished the quilt today. That's pretty cool. Just gone. <laughs> I love it. And at least I know that you're highly motivated and that your machine is not just going to stand there and be a big dust collector. So that's awesome. Eric says, whole lot of everything. I guess that's why they call it a sampler. <laughs> yes, it's got everything in it. And I don't know if it's got like Trapanto in it, but it's got everything else if it doesn't have Trapanto. Because I basically just used leftover blocks that I had, or not leftover, they were blocks that I made that I had not put into a quilt yet. And uh, Diane is saying, don't forget to stay stitch around those fat quarters before you wash. Yes, especially with these flannel. I do plan to do that. Linda says, packing up fabric today, moving this spring, then traveling in a camper for up to a year. Have more fabric than I realize. Oh, my gosh, that's going to be hard. <laughs> I don't envy that one. Wow. Well, good luck and have fun on your adventure. Bonita says, are you going to be posting to Instagram more often? Are you serious? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm doing with Instagram at this point. It's like when I all of a sudden think about it, it's like, okay, just take this picture. So I just uploaded the second picture and it's the picture of this quilt in its current condition, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember now, but yeah. I have no idea. Slowing down, Joe says, Hi, T from Aloha, Oregon. Hi, Joe. Kathy says, Everyone, I'm a little late. Love your haul video. Thank you so much, Kathy. Could you possibly do a log cabin block, scrappy like? You know, one of the things that I have always wanted to do and I just haven't had time is to do like some different types of log cabin blocks. And that's part of the thing with my channel is that I'm thinking that I may end up doing like a Patreon where I do certain things over on a Patreon and then release those videos over there. So that's where I'm kind of trying to figure out where I want to take this channel because I feel like I give out a lot for free and I don't get paid a whole lot from YouTube. And then I'm doing two Christmas quilt giveaways that I'm also doing for free over in Facebook. And so I'm trying to determine how much should I be giving away for free and should I be giving away free all the time? And it's not coming back to me. I'm not growing in subscribers like I feel like I should for the content that I put out. So I don't know what the solution is for that, but I'm really open for suggestions. So if you all have some ideas on um, the T Quilts YouTube channel and what road it should take, I'm more than happy to hear them. You can post them in the comments of any video you can post them in the chats you can send them to me in an email i'm really open because i'm kind of getting a little burned out on not being able to make my youtube channel support itself i guess that's where i'm going but i still love youtube don't get me wrong i do love youtube i'm just saying i'm trying to figure out how can i make it better and more productive for me as well because if i got to make a choice over whether i'm going to do youtube or do lecturing i'm gonna have to choose the lecturing and teaching classes because i actually make money over there and i use that money to support all the other things that i'm showing you in videos on youtube so therefore i want youtube to give something back as well so that's where i'm having my big dilemma um uh, and then i said the word taxes a long time ago eric didn't like that word you know that's one of the things that i always forget that i do in january or february and then all of a sudden it pops up on me and I get a call from my brother going, when can I drop my taxes, my paperwork off? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and Diane's saying they got to get their taxes done. Cute Red Sox, thank you so much, Christine. She says, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. So thumbs it up, everybody. I don't see any thumbs up on here. I got zero on my screen. Maybe it's wrong. 
I hope somebody gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> um, and then June was saying the little quote was a great idea for charm pins. Eric says that he's seen some electric rotary cutters. They take up a huge amount of space. So I'm going to have to search that out and see what's going on with that. And then Ofa has a red 45 cutter anniversary, but that's not electronic, I'm assuming. Sharon Devonport is here. She says, hello from Northeast Texas. Hi, Sharon. My grandmother's maiden name was Devonport. Debbie Huey said, or oh, Eric saying, Ed Debbie Huey. I won't read that. Mary Smith says, I like the mini charm ideas. Thanks. Is it go big or is it electric, no cranking? Okay, it's go big. It's the name of it. Instead of go electric. Thank you, Diane. But the whole idea is that you're not cranking the dies through the system. Um, I'm trying to go through some of the comments here, so if I'm pausing out, sorry about that. Um, Sharon says, I took out my new Cricut and made the sample card, but haven't taken out the heat press yet okay pretty cool so i had the cricket heat press as well but i felt like i guess i'm getting older and i don't want to be doing all that heavy pressing it seems like my metallic transfer when i was working with it didn't want to stick and i had to uh heat it like maybe five or six times and so that's why i decided to get a clam heat press Eric says, when is the Gill show? Uh, Debbie, when is the Gill show? It's September. It's either the third weekend, I think, in September. Debbie, if you're, oh, she's got it there. September 21 and 22. <laughs> I'm so late because I'm just reading chat comments and commenting. So I'm always behind. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Gloria says, I just bought on Saturday a Juki TL 2000, uh, 2010 Q, and I love it. Awesome. I don't know anything about the Juki brand, but I know that they are rated as a very good machine. So congratulations on your machine as well. Have fun with it. Learn how to do all those fancy things with it. And Eric says that he sells on the same machine. It's a workhorse. <laughs> I hope you can come to St. Louis, Eric, on, for our quilt cool show. That would be a hoot. We would be out of control at our own show. <laughs> Eric says, Instagram and tea don't mix. <laughs> it's only the only reason that I just don't do a whole lot more on Instagram is because I'm trying to save some content as well for my videos. So I don't want to like put spoiler alerts out there. But maybe, you know, that's some of the things I can do is just put pictures out and not really explain a whole lot about it, maybe. So that could be one way I could use Instagram. I'm not saying I'm opposed to it because I just got it. I just don't know where it's going yet. And I haven't, I've been so busy that I haven't had time to just sit down and figure out, like I was saying, the role of my YouTube channel, the role of me getting a heat press, the role of me longhorn quilting so yes i got a lot of things on my plate and i'm also booked uh for march april and i think part of may well probably all of may because i also have a retreat in may and then i also have a retreat in february so now i need to start packing getting my projects ready for the retreat for february so it's a lot i have on my plate Um, 
Bonita says Patreon is a good idea. A lot of YouTubers are going that route. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking. And I really hate to do that, but I feel like I don't have any other choice because I think uh, I think when we were in one chat a, a few weeks ago, somebody donated like a ten dollar super chat. And when I got the fees for that, I got $7 out of that $10. So YouTube takes 30%. I think that's kind of extreme. <laughs> Just me personally. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. Um, let's see. Gloria says, my mom just got the new Juki TL. 180 QVP, which I have no idea. So you all with these new machines, I say it's awesome. Juki, I have not purchased or owned personally. Bernina, I have not owned. And Janome, I have not owned. Those are three that I need to at some point try out someday. Diane says, people love helping people it works for the quilting marine i think that the quilting marine one of his other aspects that pushes his his channel is that he's a male a people a lot of females gravitate towards males that's just how it is and so i think that's part of it as well but um i help people i do charity quilts all the time but i don't have to talk about i don't talk about it every time but you all know what i do so I don't know what my solution is and I can't advertise every video as uh, helping somebody. So June Hansen says, do you have to pay to get Patreon? Patreon is more like a subscription service where um, YouTubers use it so that they can give them private content. I think Natalia Barn Boner or I can't I can't remember her last name. I'm sorry I'm butchering your butchering it. But she used to do all of her long arm videos on regular YouTube and then she started doing them where she gives those instructions of how she actually do stuff on her Patreon. And you pay like uh you have different levels of Patreon and then they might give different content to different levels. So I think I haven't used it yet, but you can donate once or you can donate. Most of your subscription people are the ones that will get your private videos that you put out. And most of those are things or content that are not going to be released to your regular YouTube channel. So it's a little different. And I would have to look that up. I only know a little bit about it. But it would be something like, say, a 3 to $5 fee per month to be a Patreon, something like that. Joan says, I like the cutter that you use that fits in the palm of your hand. Looks like it works well for you. And then Diane is saying, yes, you pay for Patreon. Mary had to go. Bye-bye, Mary. I think we're getting close. We probably are already at. It's after 8. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and keep reading these comments. Look like Debbie had to go. Bonita says, I don't know. I didn't know they took fees out of the Super Chats. And I didn't either. So that was my first time experiencing that. So um, I learned that. And I, I just thought 30% was very high. For them to take it take that amount of money and then your my fee it does go directly from youtube into my checking account so at least i don't have to pay paypal as well but it's just they took 30 percent, and i thought that was pretty high linda says i don't do facebook and my and may leave instagram also as it's filling up with ads oh okay see i didn't know that either because i'm not over there like that Linda says needs to start a new quilt. Fifth grade, fifth great grandchild due in July. I didn't think I was that old. That is funny. <laughs> that is precious though. Those are fun quilts to make. 
Patreon is a great way to go, a very fair way for your viewers to thank you for your time. And Eric is about <laughs> to pass out because him and I are both numbers people. And I just think uh, I already have your platform. You you know that I have my platform. You already, I don't make a lot of money. I get a lot of views. And so they take a lot of that money as well. And then when I get a super chat, I just thought 30% was just way too much. So it's a learning thing for me. And I'm going to have to figure all of this stuff out. And, you know, I normally, I'm not here for the money but i feel like my content is just as great as some other people that are getting money and i just feel like i'm not being respected like i should be in a way so that's a whole personal issue and i could do a whole video on that so um a lot of people joan echoing saying that she didn't know that was a fee for super chat so and i think you all are to consider that because if you're thinking you're sending like when people were sending the Quilty Marine money for buying quilt backings and they were sending him $50 and $100 and then YouTube is taking 30% of money that you're thinking you're donating to a charity, that's just horrible to me. I just think that's horrible. And it shouldn't be like that. Um, Linda says, some YouTube channels not have subscriptions for extra videos for $4.99 a month. Is that a different than Patreon? Yes, that is different. In order for me to do that, I would have to have 50,000 YouTube subscribers in order to even be eligible right now. It used to be that you had to have 100,000 subscribers, and then in November, they turned it to 50,000. And it's possible that they could put it down eventually to where it might be just 10,000, and I could join that as well. My thing is, if, if YouTube is taking 30% of your money, I don't want to be involved in any YouTube things where they control my income like that. Because I think they just take way too much money. And I would assume that they're going to take 30% of your subscriptions as well. Francie says, ads are finding their way into everything. And that fee seems extreme. Yes. So Pamela says that, Eric, that's probably why man sewing has a strong following. He doesn't explain as well as T. I must have missed something. Let me go back. Oh, just saying rip off Eric. Okay. And he says, OMG, yes, women do gravitate to male quilters. Yes, and I think I think they do. And it's just and it's I'm not upset about that. It's just that it's it is what it is. And I find that in all YouTube channels, I watch a lot of family vloggers and a lot of the women or girls in the comment section are going ham about the men in a video and not really giving the female their credit. And it's just it's just how it is. It's just that way and there's not anything you can do about it. And so I I work very hard for my YouTube channel. I put up a lot of, I put a video up every day in December and I really didn't get anything to show for it. And so I know that my regulars still watch, but I didn't get an increase in payout for December because I put a video up every day. So it was just, it's just a weird thing that happens with the human, with science period. It's all about science in a, to a certain extent, so. Uh, Bonita says, I send cashier's checks. They are free for me or cash with strings attached. <laughs> Laughing out loud. <laughs> that is funny. Yes, she does. <laughs> uh, June says, that is bad on YouTube. It's like stealing from people. Eric says, Pamela, that's true. Plus, sometimes the project he does doesn't interest me. Now, I'm not all into that. I, I'm sorry I read that. But I'm just saying that people... It's because it's a male quilter. And if you look at the male quilters, they are doing very well on YouTube. I remember when the Quilty Marine came out and he only had like maybe 15 subscribers. And I think I didn't subscribe at that time because I didn't want to put um, my name on it because I didn't know. And so when you have a low number of subscribers, it's easier for people to see who, the, who your subscribers are. I mean, easier for the youtube person to see who your subscribers are but i've always watched his videos from when he first came out 
she says can you do patreon for eq8 i guess i could do it because those videos are not getting a lot of views and so that could be something that i could do just for the people that are interested in that and so that's another reason why i have not been uh eq8 is a lot of work for me to do a video and then for it not to get enough views it's just not worth it for me and i have to really start paying attention to where i'm putting my time so that's something i can think about bonita it's not that i'm still saying that i'm not going to do any eq8 videos so that's not what i'm saying it's just that that's the last video that i would record <laughs> eric says okay truth be told i only watch t and missouri star quilt company religiously well thank you <laughs> um And then Eric says, anytime you want me to, to guest spot on a video, I'm here. And we could do that as well. I just, I need to, we need to, we got each other contact information, but I don't know how to do all of that on my system because I'm not that technology savvy. But I would love to be able to do interviews with people, even just my regular YouTube subscribers, if you all want to show your sewing areas and things like that. I just need to know how I get that information to come out on my channel. So that's the, I have a learning curve right there. I need to learn how to do that. And if anybody that on here that has a channel and can help me with that, I would really appreciate it. Mary Smith says, can YouTube teachers exchange, exchange or share subscribers? Yes, we can, we can do, collabs and things like that i think i have supported the quilting marines channel when he was um first out there i supported it when he came into my chat room he didn't have that uh, many subscribers he was just getting a little bit more known and then when he started doing the quilts of valor it really took off as well but i promote his channel all the time I've also promoted a lot of other people's channels, so it's not just him, it's, and I've su uh, supported female channels as well. So I'm not going to start calling names because that's not what it's about. It's just that I'm trying to figure out what do I want to do with YouTube, with what is happening with the YouTube community, I guess. And that's why I haven't really uh, said what I'm going to do this year with my channel. I, I don't even know <laughs> if I'm going to continue YouTube, in all honesty. I do love you all. But I have to realistically think about it's just one person. And if I'm not getting any return for my time and I can make money somewhere else, I have to go make the money somewhere else. Um, he says, Eric is saying that you can record it on Skype or FaceTime and edit the video and upload. Okay, see, I didn't know that. I used to have a Skype thing before and I have done Facebook FaceTime. Okay, that's pretty cool. I just have to figure out what I'm recording at that point. Like I'm recording from my computer camera. So that's probably why most of those don't have the best recording on them, I guess, from my desktop machine. Diane says, what kind of fees does Patreon charge you for? And I don't know what they are, but from what I hear from the other people that use them, it's a lot less than what Facebook charges. So I, I would have to, I have not thought about Patreon until like last December when I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do with you, uh, my, my channel because it's not growing how fast as I feel. That it should grow my my concern is is that i have a lot of people that are not subscribers that watch my videos than the subscribers do that's what my youtube algorithms my youtube algorithms tell me so i find that very strange so therefore maybe i need to put my content where it's for the people that i want to put it up for and not just people that are popping in and out if, if you understand what i mean <laughs> I'm laughing at Eric. He goes, you're abandoning, abandoning us. Just kidding. Not really, but I'm not gonna, um, 
I decided I'm not going to stick to a schedule of uploading. I'm just going to upload a video whenever I want to upload. That's kind of what I'm doing. And you all have already gotten quite a few videos for this month. And I was off two weeks anyway. So, And I got a couple more videos I've already recorded. But I haven't had a chance to get them edited yet. Maybe three videos. So I'm still working and I'm still doing stuff. And Bonita saying, yes, I think that's how the quilt in the ring got into my YouTube stream. And Joan Elkin says Patreon is good because it's a small monthly fee. And I don't have a clue what anybody what they charge, but I know that it couldn't be 30%. <laughs> Bonita says, so if women are drawn to men, quilters or quilters or men drawn to women quilters. But see, I don't think we have as many male quilters as we do the female crafters. And it's not even just the quilters, it's all crafters because we all cross over into other things. And even if I don't quilt, but I sew, I might can take some of your techniques or things that you do in your quilt videos and use them in my sewing projects as well or craft other crafting projects. So. And uh, Rhonda says that she found my channel through Quilting Marine's channel. Your brown hands got my attention. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, and then Diane says we have to have our chats. Yes, and I and that's one of the things is I don't even mind doing the chats. It's the the chats are not a lot of work. The last couple of chats I've been putting up lights to get a little bit more light in the room. So that's been the most work for my chat and then to just put up a post saying that I'm going to chat. Now when I have to record a video, I have to plan what video I'm going to record. I have to get my fabrics out, have to get them cut. Then I have to start making um, the, sewing the block as I'm trying to record. And then I got to stop and go sew. Sometimes I take the thing to the sewing machine if I'm sewing curves or something that I think you all need to see me sew. So then I'm back and forth between recording in here on my long arm table and then going back into my actual sewing area. So, and then I have like maybe 15 or 20 pieces of individual files that I got to all pull into the editing software. Then when I get to the editing software, I gotta wait for it to be able to read all of that. I think I need a new computer because it takes a long time for it to purge all my data in. And so I have to wait because if I don't wait, my words will not be synced with my mouth because it hasn't synced everything together yet. So then I wait for that and then I do the editing which takes about four times as long as the time of video. Just keep that in mind. So if I put up a 10 minute video, it probably took me 40 minutes to edit that. And then I have to upload it to YouTube, which takes hours because my home system, as you all know, acts crazy. It can take sometimes a whole day. Sometimes I have to cut it off and start back over again. It's like you just forgot about my file being uploaded, especially when I do like my quilt show videos where they're 30 minutes or more. Then I have once I get it up to YouTube, then I have to put my, uh, t change my titles, get all of the, uh, I give you all the little links to the other, whatever type of video it is. If it's a quilt show video, I try to make sure at the end that I give you a card for more of those same type of videos. So if you're interested in just quilt shows, you already have your playlist. So I have to link all of that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of work to do a recorded video. And then I will throw this out here. I get like 200 and maybe $25 a month from YouTube for all of those videos that I put up for you all. That's a lot of work for nothing. I love doing it. I love sharing, but I would love to see something come back from all of that. And I'm, I don't want to be complaining. I'm just trying to explain what's going on with my feelings on YouTube at this point and why it's not my type priority right now. It's still high up in the priority. So it's not like I've just dropped it and I will not do that, but it's not, it's not going to be my first task.
And Darlene said, do a subscription to your channel. I would pay. Angela says, Simplicity has an electric strip cutter. I bought the extension table to use with an older sewing machine. <laughs> Thank you, Darlene. <laughs> I mean, Diane. <laughs> God. We got some, just the names. Um... Uh, Beth Dallas says, remind us of ways we can support you. I love your videos. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm not going to go into that right now because <laughs> that's not why I'm here either. It's just that I just wish that I had the same fair playing field as other, other people in the YouTube community. That's all. And I'll get over it and be right back up here next week happy and putting more videos out because that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> but every once in a while, you just got to let people complain. Um, I just, I think that is it. <laughs> and Eric is so crazy. He said, sound won't be synced in. Okay. We be watching Kung Fu. It jumped. Uh-oh. Kung Fu quilting videos where the mouth is moving but sound comes later. <laughs> and that has happened a few times and I didn't understand why that happened to me but I finally figured that out. So yes. So they uh, high-fiving each other for blocking people. I'm glad. I because I can't do everything by the time I get down there. It's already been there a while. Pamela says, I'm glad you explained. Didn't know so much was involved in posting a video. So, and I'm not going to read a lot of this. But um, I do appreciate you all support. I feel like the people that come into my chat room are my true YouTube supporters. And I really, really appreciate you guys. And that's why I always come back and upload that next video is for you guys. It just is a little irritating when more people watch my videos that are not subscribers. They, they come back and watch my videos all the time, but they won't subscribe and give me a number so that I can get higher into YouTube. If I get a little bit higher in YouTube, if I can get to 10,000 subscribers, I wanted to apply for that YouTube have a thing where they might can help you with uh, upgrading your your equipment because I don't want to put any more money into doing YouTube videos if the YouTube videos are not going to pay for the equipment if you understand what I mean so if I can get 10,000 subscribers I can put in for a grant they may not approve it but I can still put it in anyway but right now I can't even do that so that's where I'm currently at so that's why I'm trying to really get to 10,000 subscribers. And then Diane says, I got you, girl. You're trying to run a business. And exactly. I mean, I put a lot into this business. So it has always been a business for me from day one. And I, I have been giving since day one with no return on my investment for like my first 10 years for real. So it is a business. Um, <laughs> June says, let us know what you decide. My shoulder is better. Uh, you can use it, laughing out loud. That's it's so funny. The way you are making money from Patreon, you're answering questions on YouTube and advertising your Patreon channel. She said, that way you're making money from Patreon and you're answering questions on YouTube and asking, okay, I understand what you're saying, Wind Sprinter. Thank you. And thank you, Eric. He says, we appreciate everything you do. Uh, Linda says, I don't have cable, so I watch quilting channels, floss tube, cross stitchers, and camping videos. You are all my entertainment as well as learning venues. So, well, thank you all. I'm not going to stay on here too much longer because I don't want to stay in this spot. <laughs> I, 
I just know that I do know that I love the people that come into my chat room. Just know that, that you all are just awesome. And I really, really appreciate you all. So don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. I, I'm still showing zero. I'm sure that it's not at zero likes. For some reason, it's just not showing the numbers right now on how many people have actually thumbs up the video. I don't know why it's doing that because it normally shows me a number. I can see how many people were in the chat, but I can't see how many thumbs ups I got. But if you all could do that for me, I really appreciate it. It just helps to keep my videos in the in the suggested links when you see them on the side of another video. That's what the comments and likes do for my video. So I appreciate that. What is what is 54? I must have missed something again. <laughs> Oh, she says, oh, I have 54 likes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I keep missing stuff. Because when it starts scrolling, when you all start typing all at the same time, all I see is this blur going across the screen. So, yeah, thank you all so much. We will most definitely be back here Wednesday for chat. <laughs> and we're going to be in a better disposition. I started out pretty good, and then I had to talk about my channel. But we're not going to do that next week. And we're going to have fun. I'm going to think. I don't know what I'm going to do. But we'll try to think of something fun next week to do. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Thank you everyone for showing up. And uh, thank you all for your support. I really appreciate it. And uh, good night everybody. Bye bye. And happy birthday Ray. I know tomorrow is the 31st. I got to see if I got ingredients to make you that chicken pot pie. I haven't forgotten about you. If I don't have it tomorrow, I will most definitely make sure you get it the weekend. But I'll let you know. I'm going to go check and see what ingredients I got. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next time.